If you know the blood still works, why don't you give him a hand of praise in this house? Oh, come on. You can do better than that. Come on. Praise him like his blood covered your sins. Praise him like, your, like his blood saved you and redeemed you. Praise him like you know that by his stripes you're healed. Praise him like you know that his blood reaches to the highest mountain and flows to the lowest valley. Praise him like you know his blood gives you strength from day to day and that his blood will never lose his power. Come on and give him some praise. Hallelujah. Father, we love, honor, and bless you for another expression of your goodness and grace. And as we come now to prepare, receive the word of God, I pray that your anointing would destroy every yoke that would keep your word from having free course. Pray that you would grant to us words of encouragement and exhortation to this God-man that you've established in this branch of Zion. Give your people ears to hear and hearts to receive what the Spirit is saying to the church. And if you do it, we'll give your name the glory and praise for they belong to you. In Jesus' name, amen and thank God. God bless you. May the Lord keep you as our prayers. Shake somebody's hand and tell them it's good to be here. Amen. Amen. David said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go to the Ebenezer Baptist Church. I am excited and delighted, hippopotamus glad and elephant happy to finally be in a place that I've never been before. The Ebenezer Baptist Church brings back so many memories. Um, uh, let, me, let me just give you some insight on the providence of God. Um, back in 1994, I wanted to leave St. Paul and come to Oklahoma City. And uh, we were eating barbecue across the street at Leo's. And I had gotten an appointment to preach with a thought to come to this church. I wanted to leave California. I just like Midwest folks, amen. So anyway, and um, but my deacon, the chairman of my deacon board, uh, his name was James Samuel, beloved deacon uh, of the St. Paul Church, and he said to me, "Son, if you run now, you're gonna have to run for the rest of your life." And he talked to me for three hours Saturday morning. And he said to me, you get on that plane this afternoon and you come home. I said, okay. And uh, I, I, I obeyed my, the Bible is very clear for those of us who come up through the ranks the Bible says, uh, rebuke not an elder, but entreat him as a father. And, and so I did what he asked me to do out of respect because he was a senior statesman. I, I left, I got on the last plane from Oklahoma City going back to Oxnard. I got to Oxnard and he met me uh, in my office, eight o'clock service and in Doing so, he, he, he shared with me how glad he was. He said, everything going to be all right. You're young, and you know, you're not used to dealing with conflict and all this kind of stuff, but you're going to be all right. And um, he went out to sing the opening devotional hymn. And while he was singing, he died right there in the church. Amen. And uh, so I never did get back to Ebenezer. Amen. But thanks be to God. 
some, what, 20 some odd years later, I finally get here to share the word of God. And I am so excited. And, and then to have met one of God's greatest preachers uh, in the person of Dr. Scobie. Uh, we were at Simultaneous Revival here a few weeks, a few weeks ago, a few months ago. And he thought of not robbery to invite me. I was at, in the midst of launching my full-time evangelism ministry, not knowing that at some point I'd fall in love with the St. James Baptist Church. And I want to give God praise for my brothers who come. Stand up, brothers. The, amen. Stand up, brothers. Oh, come on. You can do better than that. I, I, I just... Uh, this appointment was scheduled before uh, they allowed me the opportunity and the privilege of becoming their pastor. And so in light of that, I just asked some of the brothers, why don't y'all come with me? And uh, they pulled it together, got the band together, and got everyone organized. And I was from the depths of my heart, thank you so much, brothers, for coming. This is our first road trip. Amen. This is our first road trip, and one of the young, younger deacons, amen, Brother Adrian, decided to say, Pastor, I will drive for you. Amen. And I Facebooked on my way here while he was driving, and the church said amen. amen. And uh, I'm also grateful to have uh, two of our preachers, uh, Reverend Dennis, Jason Dennis, who is the son of my predecessor. And uh, so you called the right man to do the prayer this morning. And he thought it not, Robert, to come on and hang out with us. Thank you, Reverend Dennis, for coming and, be, and helping me out today. And uh, Reverend uh, Hines, who has been like a little brother to me for several uh, years. And uh, he and his wife have become very dear to me. And they just decided they tag along. Since y'all going, we coming too. And so thank you so much. We give God praise for each of you who accompanied us on today. Uh, let me again say how grateful I am for this invitation. Your pastor is just a jewel of a preacher. Um, so humble, so uh, committed. There is a spirit of sacrifice inherent in his uh, behavior that I know that this church is going to do great things. I've passed by this church many times over the years because I'm I'm addicted to the Midwest, and so anytime I'm driving from Dallas to Wichita, I have a regular routine of stopping at Leo's and get some barbecue. And I'm country, say so man, I'm I'm country. I, I'm sorry, I'm just country. <laughs> And uh, I make a practice of getting me some Leo's barbecue, and when the police ain't looking, I throw the bones out the window so my car won't stink. So, <laughs> but I, I've I've seen this church, and I, I've seen the development, I've seen the growth, and uh, the spirit of excellence that your pastor lives in. Ray Charles can see and Stephen don't have to wonder that this church has come a long, long way. And so thank you so much uh, for loving him and embracing him. Amen. And he found a good thing, his fiance. Amen. God bless you. Amen. And uh, uh, when I met her, I whispered in his ear, I said, I got new respect for you. I got new respect for you. Amen, amen, amen. And uh, I want to also say before going to the word, thank you, uh, but we got, I mean, Sister Eddie May for that wonderful introduction. Her, her and, my, and my niece are the dearest of friends, and she's been like a niece to me for well over 50 some odd years. And uh, she will always have a special place in my heart because my deceased mother in her declining years, uh, Eddie May, and so many of her family helped to take care of my mother. 
And so it's so good to see you. And you all have a jewel in this young lady. Amen. Let's go to the word of God. From the book of John. Book of John chapter 1. John chapter 1. <clears throat> and I promise I won't be before you long this morning. We have an afternoon service and so I'm going to do like Elizabeth Taylor said to her seventh husband, I won't keep you long. <laughs> Amen. Amen. John chapter 1. Verse 12. John chapter 1, verse 12. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, as many as believed on his name. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God or the children of God, as many as believed on his name. I want to talk for a few minutes this morning about overcoming rejection. Reverend Benson, you come on up here. Amen. Sit right there. Amen. We all love and know the infamous Reverend Benson. I might need somebody to help laugh at one of my jokes in the sermon, so I know you're up for that. Amen. That's my friend. He came into his own, and his own received him not. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, as many as believed on his name. Overcoming rejection. There is something in the soul and psyche of every human being that craves acceptance. Nobody wants to feel rejected. No one wants to experience a refusal of being a part of somebody's life. And, and, the, and the dynamic of rejection is, 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 is a powerful dynamic because oftentimes it takes one rejection to color someone's existence. One rejection from the wrong person can literally change the trajectory of someone's life. And, 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 the, and the powerful dynamic of that issue is that so often we, we, we are able to embrace and celebrate when we are loved and, and, we, and when we're embraced and when everybody is calling our name and lauding and applauding us. It's easy to celebrate when you have been loved and when when the 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 the, the word on the street is that you, you're all right uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. and and when everybody is giving you praise and accolades but very few of us have learned how to navigate through the strange waters of rejection yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, most of us, most of us have not learned how to psychologically negotiate when everybody is against you. And, 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 and the powerful issue here on the floor is how do you deal with it? Let me just say to you that, that most of us want and crave and desire success. We all want to be top dog and embrace, but when it's all said and done, you can never embrace or experience emotionally at best the, 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 the blessing of winning and being on top until you have learned how to deal with rejection. Do I have a witness in here? 
I, 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 my first full-time job was selling life insurance. Amen. I, I, I went back, got my license again, just in case a little need, need a little something, something on the side. Because <laughs> in ministry, sometimes we get paid weekly, very weekly. So... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but 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 but, but they, they taught us in our training that that you have to navigate through at least 20 no's to get to a yes and if you break down on the third rejection you'll never become successful and our churches are filled and populated with people who have been rejected on many levels of their life. And they come to church and they're not able to experience the joy of the Lord because they're so beat down and broke down and let down that they can never psychologically adjust their minds to the fact that God receives us and he embraces us and he loves us in spite of us. Got to overcome rejection. Hallelujah. This, this particular motif is mentioned by John. The only of the only one of the four disciples and one of the four writers of the gospels who even mentions this dynamic. John did not write, watch this, he was not one of the synoptic writers. He was one of the autoptic writers. The, this autoptic gospel that John writes, he writes from a spiritual perspective. Matthew from a political perspective, Luke from a sociological perspective, and, and, Mark, and Mark from a ministerial or servant's perspective. But, but John writes his, his essay about Jesus from a spiritual dynamic. And, 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 and when, you, when you look at God through the lenses of spirituality, especially the life of Jesus through the perspective, through the lenses of the spirit, you, you're able to pull some dynamics out of a spiritual perspective that you can't see in any other phase or sphere. John sees the, not only the spirituality of Christ, he also sees his human side. And in looking into the humanity of Jesus, he does not discount his humanity, nor does he eviscerate his spirit divinity from looking at Christ for who he was and why he would even feel a sense of rejection even though he was the son of the living God. He was human but he was divine. He was deity but yet he came from dirt. Christ came unto his own and his own received him not. John understands because he, he was, watch this, watch this, Benson. He, he was the most intimate and, and loyal disciple of the Lord. Uh, there, there are perks to loyalty. That there are perks to loyalty because you get a chance to see some of the intricacies and the nuances of a person that a person on a cursory level can never see. That's why you don't need to talk about folk unless you really get to know them. My grandmama put it like this, heap sees but few knows. I don't hear nobody. John found himself at times on the breast of Jesus. John, John, Lord have mercy. Can I say it like I want to say it? J Jesus, Jesus had three homies. Come on. Three of them. 
You, you know what a homie is. Homie is a ride or die. A, a homie will go down with you. A homie will die for you. A homie is loyal. You can't be a homie if you don't have any loyalty. Jesus had three homies. Peter, James, and John. He trusted Peter with his church. He trusted John because that was a relative. And he trusted John with his mama. And anybody, anytime somebody will trust you with their mama, you know they some kind of homie. Jesus. Jesus, the, the, the son of the living God, allowed, watch this, allowed somebody, somebody help me say somebody. He allowed somebody to get close to him. Let, let me pause right there. Because I don't care who you are or how wonderful you think you are. You've got to let somebody get close to you. Are, are y'all out there? See, life can bring you to a place where you can be rejected so much and betrayed so often that you don't want to be around nobody. Anybody know what I'm talking about? I don't care how many times you've had rejection in relationships. A man, your husband, who had been married to you until you were 50 and he was 50. It was your childhood sweetheart and at 50, he decided to reject you and turn you in at 50 for 225. I don't care how I don't care how many times you have been hurt and beat down and broken hearted at some point you ought to be open to somebody to get close to you are y'all out there amen that's why oh lord help me not to meddle with folk that's why you got so many lesbian relationships because you've been hurt man after man rejection after rejection amen that negro hurt you and broke you in pieces and you decided I don't want no more men man, let me just go and turn off AM and go on to FM because I've been rejected but listen you gotta learn that God can give you the grace to overcome rejection and fear and intimidation. Shout hallelujah, somebody. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. He, 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 he came unto his own. And his own received him not. I, I chose to share this message this morning. In this pastor's anniversary. Because when it's all said and done. Pastors are human. And they are filled with divinity. And the celebration that you all have engaged today is simply a statement ministering to your pastor, saying, Pastor, we love you. We embrace you. Because if it's not on your computer, you need to look it up. That most pastors suffer from rejection and feeling a sense of inferiority. Anytime your job is based on whether or not folk like you or not, or whether or not they support you, or whether or not they will give you the affirmation that you need when your job and your ministry is tied in to the acceptance of people it will make anybody insecure I wish I had some help here because they can love you today and crucify you tomorrow I wish I had some help here. You can be the hero today and be the goat tomorrow. 
You can receive the accolades of being the best preacher that ever stepped in the pulpit today. And next week, you can be the worst scoundrel that ever walked into a church. I wish I had some help here. And until, as a pastor and a preacher, are y'all out there, we learn how to deal with rejection. We can never be all that God has called us to be. How do you deal with it when you know how fickle our people are? How do you deal with it when you know next week somebody is looking at you halfway crazy? How do you handle it when you walk on your job and your boss has a bad day or is in a bad mood and you may get fired by the end of the day? How do you deal with rejection? Three things. I want to help you with this morning. First of all, in this text, I see the initiation of rejection. Somebody help me say initiation. The book says he came. He initiated the rejection. Because whenever you initiate something, there is a 50-50 chance that it will work or not. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Your pastor has a fine fiance. Come on now. And I have a fine wife. Hello, somebody. And so both of us are preachers and you know, being with a preacher ain't that easy. So you got to have some kind of game. Come on now. You got to get creative. Amen. I watched my wife for five years. She was fine sitting in the back. Amen. I said, I got to figure out how, a way to get her number. And when I finally got her number, I put it like this. I, I took a chance. I was rolling the dice. And I said, I said, if you would be so kind to allow me to spin the wheel of my conversation around the axle of your understanding. Right? Sometimes you got to go old school, man. Sometimes you got to go old school. Old, old school will get it every time. <laughs> but, 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 but there's always the chance. You cannot engage in relationship and be successful therein until you are willing to become rejected. But you got to make the first move. Hello, somebody. Glory to God. Jesus came unto his own. Understanding that the spirit of rejection has history connected with it. Because the prophets before him had all had things in their lives and dynamics in their character that would have rejected them. Do I have a witness in here? Abraham was a liar. Saul was jealous and insecure. David could not stand to look upon the x-ray picture, committed adultery in his heart, and proceeded further to put it into action. Samson wound up with a case of the WBBs, weak, bald-headed, and blind. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Job complained too much. Jeremiah cried too much. All of these, Isaiah was more critical than he was constructed and mystical and too deep to be understood and accepted and all of these prophets and priests had reason to be rejected Jesus the same came into a world where his mama was looked upon halfway crazy because she didn't have a husband y'all ain't saying nothing he could have been rejected because he was an illegitimate child. How in the world you gonna tell me that your daddy was the Holy Ghost? Y'all ain't saying nothing to me. Jesus joined the prophets who had reason to be rejected, but the books is right here. He came. 
And all I got to tell you, my brothers and sisters, that if you're going to overcome rejection, there must be a resilience and a commitment to success. There must be this kind of dogmatic determination to do what God has called you to do in a manner that cannot be turned back or relented and I want to encourage you Scobie, a man no matter how you're rejected if God gives you a vision do not relent until the vision becomes a reality do I have a witness in here he has called you, he has anointed you, he has affirmed you, he has confirmed you and if God be for you who can be against you greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world he came Jesus came he could have stopped on the sun and had a much brighter world but he kept on coming could have stopped on Jupiter had a much larger world but he kept on coming could have stopped on Pluto had a much smaller world but he kept on coming could have stopped on Saturn and had a much more artistic world, but he kept on coming. Could have stopped on Venus and had a much warmer world, but he kept on coming. Could have stopped on the sun and had a much hotter world, but he kept on coming. Could have stopped on, on the moon and had a much more rocky world, but he kept on coming. All I'm trying to say is that if you make it up in your mind to overcome rejection, God will give you the strength and the sense and the temerity and courage to keep coming. Do I have a witness in here? It don't matter who won't let you lead a song. Keep coming to choir rehearsal. It don't matter who allows you, don't allow you to pray the prayer in devotion. Keep coming to the deacon board meeting. It don't matter who keeps rejecting you as a leader. You keep coming to the meeting do i have a witness in here it don't matter who don't allow you to preach keep coming to church keep being faithful keep on coming pretty soon that rejection will turn around shout hallelujah somebody he, he came he came let me share this with you and then i'm gonna move to my next point this is my brothers and sisters in the initiation of rejection there must be, are y'all ready for this one? A consciousness that just because you are rejected does not diminish who you are. Come on. So often we internalize rejection in a way that keeps us from moving forward. Are y'all out there? Come on now. Ladies, quit tripping about that man that don't want you. You still fine? Are y'all out there? You still got smooth skin? Come, you still somewhere between Gabrielle Union and, 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 what's the bright skin one? Y'all ain't saying nothing. Us black brothers, us black brothers, we just kept on coming. Y'all was into Denzel, the bright skinned brothers. But we kept coming, we kept on coming until finally it turned around and Ty Diggs came on the scene. Wesley Snipes came on the scene. Y'all ain't saying nothing. And now us black brothers that got her going on because you know what? We kept on coming. Y'all ain't saying nothing to me. Hey Amen. You got to stay at it. God will help you and strengthen you if you just don't give up because rejection does not diminish who you are. Don't allow a man or a woman that rejects you to define you. Amen. Quit. Amen. Tell my job. Well, I just, I'm just a little too heavy set. They don't, the devil is a lie. You just keep coming. God's going to send you somebody that likes chunky but funky. He, he going he to he gonna do it. He 
he came unto his own and his own received him not you initiated are y'all out there you initiated and God will give you the strength and everything you need to withstand even though your initiation is rejected do I have a witness in here when the G when Jesus came into his own and his own did not receive him he did not relent it was no issue because he still I wish I had some help right now he still knew who he was he, are y'all out there he was still the son of the living God he was still the ancient of days he was still the redeemer he was still Abraham's redeemer he was still Adam's hope he was still David's stone it did not demand do I have a witness in here Lord have mercy he was the wonderful counselor mighty God everlasting father prince of peace it did not take away from the old testament description of who he was shout hallelujah somebody he came he came he came but 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 not only do I see in this text the initiation of rejection I also see the intimacy of rejection he came unto his own hallelujah there is nothing worse there is no pain like absorbing the pain of being rejected by your own your own family hallelujah your own father your own mother your own children your own church members do i have a witness in here to be criticized by people who should be encouraging you to be rejected by people who should be on your team to be rejected by people that you thought were in your corner is a pain that seems to never go away. Do I have a witness in here? You are not the Lone Ranger. Jesus came to his own. His own family rejected him. But in Jewish culture, can I, can I work this for just a minute? In Jewish culture, there were sex and there were segments of their culture and their nationality and in their ethnicity that all had a reason to reject him. He came unto his own. He first of all, he came to the Pharisees. The Pharisees rejected him. Lord have mercy, the church folks who knew the law, the church folks who knew the Torah, the church folks, who knew the history of Israel, the church folks, who knew all the nuances of the temple, the church folks, who knew all of the religious rituals and, and relics and knew all of the routines and the regiments of Jewish tradition. He came to them and he was rejected by his own. And all I gotta tell somebody in here right now, you may be new to church you may be new to this thing called Christianity do not allow these bigoted pharisaic platitudinal puritanical phony folks give you a distaste and a disdain for God because you don't live up to their standards maybe your dress is too short maybe your hair ain't the way they want it to be are y'all out there amen maybe you just came out of the world and they know your reputation and you're not able to live up to the appearances of traditional church you just keep on coming because God has not given you the spirit of fear of people but he has given you love and of a sound mind love God know that in your sound mind that you are accepted by Christ even when you are rejected by other folk including church folks shout hallelujah somebody he came to the Pharisees 
they did not receive him. He came, watch this, he came to the Sadducees. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. He came to the Sadducees. They did not receive him. Now, there's not a lot of difference between the Sadducees and the Pharisees. The only difference between the Pharisees and the Sadducees, I'm going somewhere with this, is that the Sadducees were so carnal in their approach to religion that they did not believe in resurrection. Do I have a witness in here? Oh, Lord have mercy. But, but don't be rejected by the Sadduceic people that come to church who don't believe that you can be resurrected. I feel like hollering right now. I don't care what church folks say. I know that God can resurrect. He can resurrect a dead marriage. He can resurrect a dead career. He can resurrect a dead life. Do I have a witness in here? He can resurrect a dead reputation. I believe in resurrection. Is there anybody here who can jump to your feet and say, I believe in resurrection. I know that God can give me another chance. I know that God is able to do anything but fail. I know that God is able to do exceedingly and abundantly beyond all that I ask or think. Do I have a witness here? Oh, by the power, by the power that works in me. What is the power that works in me? The power that's in me says that greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. The power that is in me is greater than the power of rejection. You put me down, he'll lift me up. You say no, he'll say yes. You say I can't, God says I can. You say I won't, God says I will. Say yeah, say yeah. Wow! Yes he will, yes he will. I'm done. I'm done. Stand to your feet. I'm done. He came but to his own and his own received him not. That's the intimacy of rejection. But let me move on to the inoculation. Somebody help me say inoculation of rejection. You know what inoculation is. Stand to your feet. I'm done. Here's inoculation. I got a flu shot. And a flu shot, what it does is that it puts the flu in you. So when the flu comes on you, it can no longer get in you. Y'all ain't saying nothing. So, so when you're inoculated, God has already put rejection in you because he was rejected despised a man of sorrow and acquainted with grief and we did not receive him but he was wounded for our transgression he was bruised for our iniquities and the chastisement of our peace was upon him and with his stripes somebody help me say with his stripes I am healed I got it I got it I got inoculation in my soul I've got inoculation in my spirit what are the ingredients what are the ingredients what is the medicine he was full of grace and truth. Somebody shout hallelujah. When you got grace 
on the inside. Rejection can't overtake you. He looked beyond all my fault and saw my knees. Shout hallelujah. I'm done. Stand to your feet, everybody. He came into his home. And his own received him not. But as many as received him, he inoculated them. Gave him power to become the sons of God. Lord have mercy. You don't have to worry about rejection because you got power. You got power. That power is full of grace and truth. Don't matter what my shortcomings are. Lord have mercy. Doesn't matter how, how discounted or how enabled I may be. I'm inoculated. Lord have mercy. Can you just go hug three people and tell them I'm inoculated? I'm inoculated. I'm inoculated. I'm inoculated. I'm inoculated. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. It won't work. No weapon formed against me. Shall prosper. It won't work. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. <laughs> it won't work. God will do what he said he would do. He will stand by his word. It will Oh, God will do what he said he would do. He will stand by his word. He will come through. No weapon formed against me. Ha <laughs> ha. Shall prosper, oh Lord, eh? it won't work, it won't work, it won't work, it won't work, it won't work. It won't work. It won't work, no. It won't work, everybody. No weapon for 